All right, in this lesson we are learning about membrane structures. Now remembering that the membrane is that barrier between the cell and the outside world and it's in control of what's coming in and out of the cell. All right, a cell membrane is known as a fluid mosaic, right? It is fluid, things can move around, it has to be quite flexible and it's known as a mosaic because it's made up of lots of different elements that all fit together. Our very first element that makes up the majority of this um, fluid mosaic is a phospholipid. And this phospholipid has, we represent in this model, as having a head and a tail. Now the tail is known as hydrophobic because it has an aversion to water, so it will repel water. But the head is hydrophilic, okay, and that means it's liking water. So what happens if, if we pour a whole bunch of phospholipids into some water, they will actually naturally rearrange themselves into this bilayer, this double layer, where the hydrophobic ends, the tails are pointing inwards, and the hydrophilic ends are pointing outwards, okay? Now, if a uh, substance is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic at the same time, it's known as amphipathic. I just wanted to make sure I got that one right. Amphipathic. Now, these aren't the only molecules in this membrane structure that are amphipathic, okay? So a hydrophobic and hydrophilic phospholipids, and a lipid is a fat, and this has fatty acid. This tail is a type of fatty acid, chemically speaking. All right, our next important piece of the puzzle is protein, okay? Now, protein... Uh, appear in lots of different places and lots of different ways in the membrane. We have these transmembrane proteins that run all the way through from top to bottom, so inside to outside. This is another transmembrane protein, and this is known as a peripheral. So we've got transmembrane here, and this is a peripheral because it is on the periphery. Okay, now some of these peripheral proteins can be anchored chemically inside the membrane and they can also have these things called um, carb well, they're essentially carbohydrates that are on the outside and they're used for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. These peripheral membranes are very different in function to what these transmembrane um, proteins do. These transmembrane one, this one here is a channel protein, I might just change pens. It's a, ch a channel protein because it's allowing things to move straight through it from inside to outside, right, all the way through and back into the cell there. This one, however, is not a channel, it's a carrier protein, okay? And that carrier protein means that what it can do is open up when it needs to and push something through, but it does need a lot of energy to do that, and that will be part of what we study when we talk about transport across the membrane, okay? So some of these, or these proteins here, are also, let's get this right, amphipathic. And they're amphipathic because the amino acids that make up the protein are arranged in such a way where the ones on the outside are the hydrophilic ones and the ones on the inside are the hydrophobic ones. Now inside this channel you will have hydrophilic amino acids to allow things like water to flow straight through. This one here might not have the same arrangement because it's doing its role of opening and closing when it needs to. Okay, so the proteins have quite a number of different jobs. It might be transport, or in this case, it might be cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, so where the cells and tissues are butted up really close to one another. Um, what else might they do? They might also be part of receptors, so when there's lots of blood sugar, then your insulin arrives and it can dock on the outside of the cell to know that, well, we need to take on board lots of sugar. Okay, the next piece of this fluid mosaic is cholesterol. Now, cholesterol, we think of usually that being part of fatty foods or something like that, but in actual fact, this is needed to stop the membrane being so fluid. So it decreases the fluidity of the membrane. Now, what that means is that instead of allowing all these things to move around entirely all the time, these guys here sort of anchor the thing um, so it's not completely washing around too much, okay? And they do appear mainly in animal cells. They do not appear in plant cells, so that's a specific one there. And it's, again, decreasing the fluidity. It does a lot of things. It's also 
amphipathic. There's that word again with the outside parts being the home of uh, hydrophilic parts and the inside parts being the hydrophobic parts. Okay, so it also decreases the permeability, okay, the ability for something to penetrate that um, membrane. It stops it happening because it packs all of those um, phospholipids in. All right, there's a lot going on here across our fluid mosaic, but it's important that we understand each part and their roles in them. So please do some reading.